Hello, my name is James Wormsley. I'm the course director for the forestry undergraduate programs and the distance learning forestry programs at Bang University. And I'm just going to give you a short presentation just to give you some insights into our programs and into the, the way we run our programs here. And hopefully give you some uh, some inspiration, some motivation to think about doing some more research of your own and maybe to think about applying to study with us. So I've got a photo here which is taken from a forest in North Wales. Um, it's a plantation forest, so it's one that's been created by planting of seeds or seedlings rather. And it really captures many of the issues that our forests across the planet face today. We have a tree here which is common to much of the United Kingdom, um, in fact widespread across much of uh, the Northern Hemisphere indeed, uh, Fraxinia celsius or ash, and it's been very badly affected um, at the moment across Northern Europe including the UK by uh, a disease called Hymenocyphus fraxinea ash dieback. So what do we do about that? Do we do, we do anything about it? We're obviously worried about a pandemic at the moment, a global pandemic uh, that affects humans, but this is really a pandemic of catastrophic um, consequences for this particular species of tree. There's very little resistance. So what should we do? What should we do to mitigate this? What should we do to um, make arrangements for areas of the countryside, areas of Europe and beyond? where we have large amounts of ash trees. How should we be man managing those? We've also got another tree here called larch, um, which is again being affected by something called Phytophthora remorum. Um, and uh, again, there's been large scale clearances of this particular tree. And a lot of thought is going into what to plant instead of it. It produces very valuable timber. We can also see the exchange of moisture and gases between the forests and the atmosphere. Of course these forests are absorbing large quantities of carbon dioxide. But how does that vary between different tree species? How does it vary as the trees grow older? How does it vary as the climate warms or as the climate dries or as the climate gets wetter or as we have more storms? How does it, how does it impact this? We have here another tree. This is a pine tree. Um, pines have been impacted again by another disease. We've also got um, some species of native broadleaves, there's some birch here. We've also got oak in this forest. But these are very badly affected by squirrels, grey squirrels in particular in many parts of the United Kingdom. Deer as well are posing huge problems in terms of the natural processes of replacing um, uh, of the, uh, the, the young seedlings growing to become the mature trees of the future. And again we've got some another thing that's really really significant for forests across the planet is the landscape it benefits. People really like the look of forests, they look, look at this particular forest because they like the variation in colour, in various in age, various in size of the trees. So how what does this mean in terms of how we manage our forests? Does it mean we should have much more diverse for us than we have now? Can we plant very simple systems all of one species? How should we manage our forests? These are the sorts of questions that our current forestry students and our graduates grapple with. And of course we also have mixed in amongst this uh, this plantation we have what are called ancient woodland sites, ancient semi-natural woodlands. What should we do about restoring these? Should we restore them? What were they used for historically? So at the moment we've got a global pandemic and we've got um, issues related to the supply of medical materials, we've also issues re related to the supply of biofuel um, for hospitals and care homes, lots of them are powered by this, and we've got a, a continuing demand for this sort of material, this is material from all from the same species of tree or grown on very simple systems. Um, if you like plant a crop, leave it for 20 years, 40 years, harvest it, plant another one. And we've got information here that you might be interested in looking at in relation to COVID-19, something that's affecting all our lives at the moment. Um, 
unfortunately lots of people are losing their jobs at the moment um, there's, there's going to be some very very painful economic consequences of, of the uh, the pandemic very very painful other consequences as well but I'm very pleased that there's just a glimmer of good news is that our, our, some of our employers um, are continuing to take on graduates and also placement students despite the current uncertainty so in relation to managing our forests and our landscapes here we have a clear fell system all the trees were the same species they were all planted at the same time they were all managed in the same way they were all harvested at the same time producing large quantities of material all of the same size um, all the same dimension very similar timber properties very convenient if you're a large sawmill wanting to process that into for example pallet wood for the process transportation of medical supplies and food but here we've got a slightly um, less if you like dramatic change in the landscape following harvesting this is called a strip shelter wood system where you um, you take off successive strips of trees and into the strip um, hopefully what happens is that seeds fall and they grow into young trees and here we've got what you might describe as a uh, a group shelter wood system where um, the canopy is retained to a much greater extent retaining much more of the forest microclimate humidity um, and shade and um, again allowing natural processes to decide which species of tree grows um, which species of tree you, you get um, but also being much more um, open to the problems such as no trees regenerating at all and instead lots of uh, non-tree vegetation starting to dominate um, or trees of very potentially low biodiversity value or low economic value or both starting to dominate your system and we engage with um, local and international projects relating to these very questions this is a site a photo taken at a site in North Wales at Clochinog um, where we're involved in a long-term experiment looking at these different silver cultural systems and we use this as a platform not just for really high quality research um, but we also use it as, as there are opportunities relating to this sorts of uh, collaborations that we have for students and in, in the background here we've got one um, particular character here he was actually a graduate in 2019 from the BSc Forestry Programme and he's now employed by Forest Research partly on relation to the work, the great work he did um, on this experimental site. We are uh, a group of uh, very active researchers, um, internationally active. Um, some members of staff have um, recently published some work relating to the Amazon and tipping points. Just how vulnerable are these mega ecosystems to changes in climate to changes in their management to deforestation and there's some alarming um, research has come out of this there in the last few weeks so coming to study at Bangor you really do study alongside um, some of the world's leading um, experts on many of the topics relating to conservation and forestry tropical forestry um, production forestry um, and forestry and, and the wider environment this is a nice quote I think it's something that at, at, at a time when many of us are on lockdown the opportunity to just look out the window and see nature um, or to take one of our um, if we're allowed to um, daily exercises to witness buds bursting if we're in the northern hemisphere or leaf fall and senescence if we're in the southern hemisphere or transitions from dry season to rainy season and vice versa in the tropics just these observations of the natural environment are priceless and what we do when you if you come to study with us is we facilitate we supervise we give you the skills and expertise to make the most of these observations in a way that will hopefully help you become the best better decision makers of the future in terms of how we manage our forests how we manage our woodlands how we conserve them so it ranges from very small scale production of uh, in this case shingles of Leyland Cypress for a, 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 a wood, wood shelter that the National Trust own locally to visits to large larger sawmills most advanced sawmills in Europe um, to undertaking forest mensuration forest ecology surveys 
use of both paper maps and also electronic digital mapping technologies as well um, and ecological surveys in this case in Ghana um, in a forest reserve looking at natural regeneration. Come to study with us you also be using regularly our blackboard system so this is a blackboard, blackboard site um, that our first years are currently engaged with and you'll see there's all sorts of resources available on here including links to live um, broadcasts of lectures um, but they're also recorded and available for you to view whenever you like so this is really ideal in terms of the current lockdown the current suspension of face-to-face -face teaching we've been able to continue both live broadcasts but also recording those for people who aren't able to attend live um, reading lists as well um, some modules have extensive reading lists these are these are available to you if you're not a registered student um, so do have an explore of the various um, degree program websites and in particular the course content link which will link you to the specific modules on those programs and you'll actually be able to find on the resources links to the reading list but don't buy any books because you'll need you should wait until you register um, it would cost you hundreds thousands potentially tens of thousands of pounds to buy um, the resources and, and even just a single modules reading list so don't do that um, but do get an idea of the sorts of um, resources we're using and of course we do have facilities as well for seminars and lectures large scale and small scale this particular image is a guest lecture given by some forestry professionals um, in the last few months in Bangor we stand on the shoulders of giants at Bangor University we really do um, I'm currently the custodian of this tome um, it's got the names of all forestry graduates from the undergraduate programs since 1922 we started in 1904 we're currently halfway through this book so 2120 perhaps we'll go up to depending how many students we have come study with us I mean the basic message is there's not many people studying forestry if you come and study forestry or a related degree with us you are one of the one of a few you're one of a, a very special few people who've studied this topic with us but it really um, places on our own shoulders those of us teaching it those of us studying it um, expectations to continue these great traditions that are um, that the the uh, alumni of the past have achieved and there's one particular lady called Mary Sutherland the first woman to ever graduate with a forestry degree and on the planet she graduated from Bank University she provides inspiration for our current students um, this lady Sarah she res recently visited the um, the Redwood Grove which is, exists in New Zealand where Mary Sutherland spent much of her career there's a grove of redwoods planted in her honor and we have an annual award for the best female forestry graduate there's two other recipients and we retain really good links with our alumni uh, as well um, this is the head forester for the Duchy of Cornwall here, Geraint Richards, who was recently in Bangor giving a guest lecture that was of course broadcast live to all our part-time students who weren't able to attend. Incredibly inspirational um, lecture and just an example of one of many, um, many, many similar lectures that we've had. All of our degrees are accredited by the ICF, so not only do you have the credibility of studying a degree that um, the likes of Garrett Richards and Mary Sutherland and many other f um, f phenomenal alumni have, uh, have, have achieved but you're also studying a professionally recognized degree that lead to, can help you, can contribute towards you gaining chartership status if you're interested if you're interested in doing look finding out more about what we get up to I'm just going to point out our newsletter so this was released a couple of months ago um, if you're wondering how to find this newsletter it's published on our website just go to um, our key subjects on the School of Natural Sciences website and go for the forestry link here and you'll find all sorts of resources including links to our staff or our team but here's the newsletter here so do have a look at our newsletter also follow our Twitter feed you'll see various news items and um, some some really outstanding um, results from various surveys relating to our teaching or our research. 
So do have a browse of that. It'll give you some insights into all sorts of activities that our students and staff are up to. We've got a really active student society called BIFSA. Um, it sells Christmas trees to staff and students every year. These students went on an international forestry student symposium to Mexico a few years ago. I think two years ago they were in um, South, three years ago they were in South Africa. Last year was Estonia, and they even hosted an international conference of uh, forestry students from around Europe in April of 2019. Um, they work with lo uh, with national organisations. This is a, a a prize presented by the Royal Forestry Society to the President last year. Um, this is a tree planting initiative, student led, entirely student led. Um, with some local landowners planting native species of tree in the um, the Ogwen Valley in North Wales which is devoid of a lot of vegetation and students get up to all sorts of adventures beyond their formal studies and this is really important that, that um, I emphasize this these these gentlemen here were part of a group that self-organized attending a international symposium in the Italian Alps um, in May of last year I wish I could have gone, but sadly I can't do everything. But anyway, there's lots of opportunities. So the future, well, the current future is bright. This is a, a, current, a photo of our current first year cohort of students. It's got an exceptional group of young men and young women, um, both from, um, mostly from the UK, but also abroad as well. And um, we've got an incredibly diverse cohort of postgraduate students studying with us from not just the UK but across Europe and across the world as well. We really are part of a global community. We've got um, alumni and, and, and professional net networks across the planet. The future of our forests, um, they face many threats, they face many challenges but we're optimistic that um, with this current generation of students and hopefully um, several more generations of students coming to study with us that the future for our forest is really, really bright. So I'm just going to stop on this comment here. I'm studying at Bangui University, it's a bilingual university, and Austin Duad i Provisco Banga, if you come to Bangui University, Pediach Abad of an Govan am Gamorth, which means don't be afraid to ask for help. This is a message that we encourage um, and we emphasise with all our students. The staff are here to help each other, the students are here to help each other and uh, please don't be afraid to ask for help. Ask for help via email, via telephone, um, via the various channels that you've got open to you and um, hopefully we'll be uh, welcome you to Bangor University at some point in the future. So thanks very much for listening and watching. Um, Kreuzsommauer, a very big welcome, and that's goodbye from me.